Hey everyone, Ryan here. Today we're going to be coil building, making what's called an udu. Udus are Nigerian clay drums that were also used for storing grains. So what you'll need for this project is clay, a knife or some sort of cutting tool, some ribs, maybe a gourd rib like so, or your metal rib, which is also a gourd shape. And then you may need the flexible serrated rib, aka the even more deadlier flexible metal rib of death. Additionally, it's good to have a ruler, or if you don't have a ruler, a pair of calibers, and we'll need a bowl at least. So we're going to start by making our coils. You'll have a ball of clay like so, but we just want to squeeze out the coils. So I'm going to take this in half, kind of squeeze it into place. This is very soft clay that I'm working with today. So I'm just squeezing out little ropes. And once I've squeezed it out, I'm ready to continue to roll it. Now I want these coils to be approximately 3 eighths in terms of thickness, so finger width there. And I'm going to put it on the table. Now I'm going to stand to do this. But once you have your rough rope squeezed out like so, we then actually want to twist it. We're going to twist it opposite of each other, opposite ends. And by twisting it kind of in this fashion, when we roll it, it's going to keep the coils round. So I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to do a full rotation, kind of spreading out my hands as I go. And this might take a little bit of practice to get it completely uniform. If you end up having parts that aren't so round, just continue to kind of roll fully. I'm going to cut these diagonally. You'll see why in a second. But again, I'm going for finger thickness. Okay, so now that I have all my coils rolled out, I'm ready to start making my form. I'm ready to start with my base first. Um, if you're working at home, you can also use a slab if you want to roll out a slab or pinch out a base as well. And we're going to put that over a form. So I have a round form here. I want to start round as round as possible. Um, we're going to put the form on top of this, but we're going to start creating the base first. So I have a coil ready to go here, and I'm just going to wind it up into a spiral. And as I mentioned before, my clay is really, really wet. If your clay is kind of on the uh, dry side, you might want to slip and score using scoring tools such as a serrated rib or uh, your pin tool and some of the liquid clay to slip there, peanut butter consistency. So I want to start with a base that's going to easily cover this surface area here. So I'm going to add another coil to the outer portion. And those diagonal ends that I cut, like so, I want to match those up. 
so that way it seamlessly blends together, merges together. And at the end, you want to make sure that coil has a little bit of a taper. So that way it doesn't stand out too much as we blend. So if you're doing a coil base, we're starting with pressure from the center and going outward. Now this is where it could be great to have a banding wheel or a turntable if you have it. But if you don't, we can just rotate it. So I have my index finger here. I'm going to work in one direction, starting from the center out. Okay, so once I have my basically patty formed, I'm going to smooth out the top part here. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the exact same thing on the other side. So same direction with my flexible model rib of death. Smoothing one direction, radiating out. And it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth at this point. That'll come later on. Exact same thing. Okay, so once I have my patty formed and smooth, I'm going to take my rounded form. Now, this could be a round bowl, it can be a pump mold that you might have plaster hump mold, anything round that you could build on top of, just to form the base to start. So on this one, I'm going to build on the outside, but I have another one that's the reverse, the inside. So if you have, if you're working from a finished bowl or something that's not porous, I recommend using um, a resist like soap, um, paper, plastic, or cooking spray in this instance. Just gonna spray a little on here and center my form over top. So working with equal pressure all the way around. And I want to let this sit up a little bit. Right now it's a little bit floppy and flimsy, so I'm gonna let this sit aside in the sun. But I do have another one prepared. So I'm going to switch this out. Okay, and here it's the inverse. So here you see it's built inside the bowl. And the benefit of this is I can easily just use the bowl as a turntable instead of a banding wheel or a turntable. So this one's a little bit firmer. And that firmness is going to help support the weight a little bit more as we continue to build on top. Um, I'm going to grab some more coils. And so I want my udu to be 12 inches high and 8 inches wide at the widest part. I'm going to use a template and I have both a positive and a negative template to work from for my ultimate shape. But this will help keep me in track, so as I work, I don't go out too far or too much. So I'm going to use that periodically. But you can see I need a little bit wider, so I'm going to build out just ever so gradually from this form here. So I'm going to grab some coils to work with. And so with two different consistencies, I may choose to actually score. This clay. Just so it has a better chance of sticking together. I'll do the 
same on this side as well. So I've got a nice wet sponge here. Just a quick brush over top. Maybe a little bit on this side. So I'm going to place my coil slightly outside the form, not too far out. And in this instance, I actually want to work layer by layer, so I don't want to do the whole rope snake thing. I'm actually going to cut. So that way I have a little bit more control in terms of how large I go. So I have my first coil placed. I'm going to merge the two with a um, blending pinch. So blending pinch happens with downward pressure from your thumb and or your forefinger, depending on where you are. So it's going to happen like this. And you'll see as this comes around, my thumb just kind of pressing down. So once I have the coils blended on the inside, I'm then going to use a flat pinch to kind of thin the coils. Get it a little bit uniform throughout. So just equal pressure almost with your thumb and index finger. And I'm going to continue to build this out a little bit more before I come back and smooth a few things out. So I'm going to add a few more coils. In addition, I also want to continuously measure. I'm going for 8 inches on the exterior diameter, so I'll periodically grab my ruler, or if you prefer calibers, to just make sure I'm also gaining some width that way as well. Okay, so I've gotten my form a little bit bigger, and now I'm at 8 inches of width up here, but I want to refine the shape a little bit more. So I'm going to use my metal rib and my plastic or rubber gourd rib here to just kind of refine the shape as I go around. The walls themselves are nice and thin as well. You want them to be about a quarter inch in terms of thickness. So as you were seeing me pinch there, I was trying to approximately get that quarter inch thickness all the way around. But now I'm going to focus more on the outside. And to do that, I'm going to kind of do upward motions in different directions, possibly diagonal or just straight up in some instances, just to blend a little bit more and get that shape to come in just a little bit more as well. the outside smoother and then if I need to if I've changed my shape at all or I'm not 
quite at the 8 inch width. I could also work on the inside as well. I find it's easier to use your gourd rib for that, but just supporting the wall on the inside. And you can kind of push out if you need to. Right here I'm just smoothing the inside just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with the bottom half of my floor, as you can see here. And now I'm going to start to work inward, try and taper it in. So I'm going to be placing coils on the interior to slowly bring the form in until I get to this portion here. I'll flare out again. And before I start, I'll also mention too, if you're coils are feeling a little bit on the wet side, they're still kind of soft. I would let this sit up a little bit more. Uh, the sun just came out, so we can use the sun, just let it sit a little bit more. Mine's feeling a little bit firm, so I can start to build upon this. Looks like there's a little bit of rain in this location, so I'm going to switch places. It'll be a little bit of a scene change. Hold on one sec. Okay, so we're back. And I'm just going to continue setting up, just continue to coil. this point I have it pretty much going in how much I want here um, and I want to just double check my shape you might have seen me 
during the uh, speed up montage, just patting some areas in. You can shape a little bit that way. It's better if you have like a broader thing, like a paddle or something like that. Possibly even like a wooden stick or something. To bring that shape in how you want. And the broader the better. For certain circumstances. Okay, so it's currently coming in, coming together. It's a little bit more in than I currently want, but as I build the neck portion and flare it out, you'll watch me use my thumb, the hook of my thumb, to actually flare that part out and make it more of that gourd shape. I'm going to use this stick tool to push out the inside just a little bit. My fingers can't seem to reach. Many of you might also experience your clay starting to slump at this point. If you're using really wet clay, it might be a good idea to let it dry a little bit more first before continuing on. For me, I think I just got the shape off a little bit. All right, so at this point, almost finished making the pot itself. And I'm gonna bring the top in. The top is actually gonna be a little bit more flat um, and convex, if you will. That'll provide a nice surface for your palm to actually hit the top of and can make a great suction for resonation, if you so choose. So I'm gonna start with just bringing the current top coil in just a little bit and then I'm going to bring other coils in as well and as I'm doing so I'm going to use a kind of a pleating pinch so just kind of bring the two pieces of clay together
beat the top flat. You can already hear that drum resonance. One of my favorite things about pottery when I was a kid was just being able to blow into a jug or bang it. Okay, so I think I've done the most shaping that I can do now. You can see at the top, I left this hole open, and it's a little bit jagged. So I'm going to finish this up a little bit after this is gets leather hard. So um, I'm going to let this sit overnight, and it'll be a little bit more stiffer to work with. So we'll see you in the morning, or in one second. Okay, so it's the next day, and my pot's a little bit firmer. You can see I can removed it from my bowl that I was resting in. It's taken on shape here, so now I'm gonna finish it up. You can see at the top, the top's a little uneven. But it's starting to make a sound. So I'm gonna even this out, and to help me with that, I have a two inch cookie cutter. Now, I only have a uh, serrated or jacket edged one. So I'm going to use the reverse side and just use my pin tool to trace. Then I'm going to use a smaller knife to cut. So now I'm going to put a hole in the top so that way when I play it arrow will get forced out of the top here, so the hole will be on the side here. So I'm going to do the same thing again, just trace that hole. I'm going to put it as much on the, uh, what would now be the top, as possible. So you can hear, the more I cover the top, the more that changes the pitch. So now that I have my two holes cut, I'm going to smooth everything else. To do that, I'm going to take my choice of my metal rib here. A smooth flat surface that I can burnish in circles. I can use the opposite side of a spoon doing the same thing and that might be good for tight corners. Or you can take a sponge and a plastic bag and use this to burnish and polish your surface as well. And the reason why you want a smooth surface, or may want a smooth surface, is because these pots tend to get fire to low temperature, uh, normally pit fired, um, 
you probably won't have any glaze application on these kind of pots. It would change the sound dramatically. So most are bare, or some have what are called terraciculata uh, applied to them for a smooth, uh, sealed surface. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, have areas of texture, and I might do that a little later, but I'm going to smooth out my pot. And the other thing you can add, too, is a mic hole, if you want. Um, you'd use maybe a boring tool, like so, or you could just use anything you have, really, to create a hole on the side. So I might add one close to the top so it'll catch the sound as it's coming out. Just right here. For any big gouges like that one, might actually use a black rib, a rubber rib to uh, smooth it out first. Just to get it all level. Okay, so I think I've burnished this udu enough. There might be a few other small details I might do later on. Um, I mentioned before applying terra sigillata to give a nice seal. You could also paint or varnish this kind of drum as well. Uh, but these drums don't get fired very hot. If anything, they get bisque fired only. Um, so, and that will keep the nice warm resonance and sound that you can currently hear. Um, now there are tons of different shape voodoos out there, and I'm going to provide a website that I found that shows some of those shapes, the different sounds, and you can try some of those different variations out. But hope you have fun, hope you try this out, you enjoy this project. For Clay Room, this is Ryan signing off. Thank you. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.